I started painting cars back in the 60s, and this lasted up through the 70s and the early 80s. All of these materials were solvent-based, and they really aren't good for you to breathe. And back then, we really didn't have a big sense of urgency about respirators and protecting ourselves from the damage these paints can do. And consequently, I pay for it today with some nerve damage to my legs. If you're in a small DIY shop, I highly recommend that you use all water-based materials for several reasons. Number one, you don't have a professional booth. And number two, none of the things in your shop are probably explosion-proof, like these fans in here and my compressor. So please stick to water-based materials. Now, with water-based materials, uh, I use one of these uh, respirators or, or uh, dust protectors. They have the little breathing thing in them, and I love this. I mean, it, it fits me just fine, and it doesn't fog up my glasses. Uh, plus, with my fans here, it throws most of the spray, spray mist out of my shop uh, before it has a chance to get on me. So please keep the safety precautions in mind. One of the neat little things I discovered was uh, you need a standoff to keep these up off the table when you're spraying them. So what I do is I take these little uh, grout line separators for tile work and I use these. They work just fine. I put this uh, the X part down on the uh, bottom side and a little skinny part up to the top and they work just fine for a project like this. On warm days, I open my garage door and set up fans blowing over the work surface. In the winter, I do very little spraying except for small projects. When weather doesn't allow me to open the door, I'll often place a furnace filter in front of this square fan to collect the overspray. Just turn it on and the filter will suck fast. There's really no need for any fancy holder. The last thing before picking up the gun is to do a good dust removal by tacking and blowing off the surface. I store my tack rags in a sealed container so they don't dry out. A tack rag should always be completely unfolded and piled in your hand. Together I use both compressed air and the tack rag to get the dust off the surface. If you really want to get fussy, wet the floor around your project so you don't blow any dust up while you're spraying. I'm going to do two more parts in this spraying series. Next we'll cover the actual spray gun technique and the final video will be on cleaning your equipment. If you have any comments or suggestions on this video, please feel free to post them. I welcome them. Plus, you make it a great day and thanks for watching. Check out our tools I use, Amazon, online store at www.budmanproductions.com. That's www.budmanproductions.com.